Hi, my name is Mike Disa. I'm an animator, writer, director, and producer. I always knew I wanted to be an, uh, an artist, and I always knew I wanted to be an animator, even though I didn't actually know what that job was. So I, I didn't, I'm not as lucky as you are. I, I didn't go to school for animation. Everyone in Chicago thought cartoons just fell from the sky in meteors. We didn't know that people created them. I first got interested in animation back in Chicago watching um, early morning television before school because they used to show uh, Warner Brothers um, cartoons. But I knew I wanted somehow to have something to do with those colorful images on the screen and dropping heavy things on that coyote. So, you know, that was the only thing I really wanted to do. Dark Dodgers to the rescue! So I was in college, uh, and it was my freshman year, and I was uh, at a little art film house. I don't remember what the real movie was we were supposed to see, but before it, they showed Ralph Bakshi's Wizards. And I was transported. <laughs> And that was it. At that point, I was like, no, forget computer science. I'm going to go learn how to do this. And when I came out to California, my first job on a feature, my first feature film job was for Ralph Bakshi. Cool World. And that was my first feature animated film. I graduated from college uh, 26 years ago. And then I came out here about 24 years ago in a car uh, with nothing but a portfolio and a couple tanks of gas and about $700. So when I got out here, I had to start over. My portfolio was crap, I couldn't find work. So um, I, I ended up starting over and training myself from scratch. My first job was working in a digital cleanup for um, educational games. And I ended up then in video games for a little while. And I worked on things like Maximum Carnage and the first X-Men. Uh, at the same time I was doing freelance on things like Animaniacs and uh, Tasmania, Tiny Toons and th things like that because everybody was, ma was making some money freelancing on that. Um, I did some stuff on the original Batman series and the storyboard cleanup and things like that. But my first film was with Ralph Bakshi. And um, after that, I did a couple of, you know, again, freelanced and bounced around. But then I went, uh, I got hired by Steven Spielberg to actually uh, work on the film Casper as a um, layout artist and storyboard artist. And um, after a couple months there, I was like, mm. and so I left and I went to Disney. And I was at Disney for 11 years uh, and uh, started, worked my way up to be an animator through the training program. Worked with Eric Goldberg, who became an animator, uh, eventually a, a lead animator, and after that, a, a storyboard artist. I left there to go to uh, Looney Tunes Back in Action, live action with Eric, which was a combo live action animated film as an animator and a storyboard artist. Um, after that, I was asked by Warner Brothers to stick around and develop a couple movies. That was the first time I started writing. I wrote my first script there. Uh, and then uh, moved on to be one of the sequence directors, or at one point director of the whole film, on Rob Zombie's El Super Bisto. And it was there that the Weinsteins found me and asked me to do the Hoodwinked movies. And after uh, Hoodwinked, I went off and did two um, R-rated anime horror movies, uh, one called Dead Space, the other one called um, Dante's Inferno. And then came back uh, to America and did Postman Pat. And at that point, then I was asked to come to Warner Brothers and asked me to create a TV series, and so we ended up rebooting Wacky Races. And that gets us to about here. But the most fun I've ever had was Wacky Races, my most recent TV series, because, you know, I got to write it and direct it and build my crew. I'm proudest of Wacky Races. I think that was creatively the most successful thing I've ever worked on, on all levels. You know, not just production and writing and comedy and acting and directing and storyboarding, but it, it was an all around, I think, a very, very funny, good show. Um, what I mostly do as a showrunner of television is um, I write. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm writing a pilot for Netflix at this moment. Because of my interest from being the wrist that drew the pictures, to be the director who executed the pictures, to be the producer who conceived and controlled the, the entire crew to make the pictures, eventually led me to becoming a writer which is all about inventing it from scratch. I mean, I love the craft and the technique of animation, but what I found was, you realize at a certain point, it's technique, like acting is technique. And I, like I imagine a lot of actors get to a point where they, you know, it's not enough just to say the lines slightly differently and emote. You know, they want to actually, you know, direct the play. With the exception of the big studios like Disney, the production companies that put together these animated films and these animated TV shows tend to be privately run and were so sexist 
and to, and to a degree racist um, in their hiring practices. Almost everybody I worked with when I got into the business was white and male. Uh, as a matter of fact, at Disney, the cleanup department is almost entirely female, whereas the, an the animation, the animators, are almost entirely male. This was true all through the traditional golden age and the resurgence. I know that um, the women in the cleanup department were paid a fraction of what the men in the animation department were, were paid. I know there was very little advancement for women. Just like the rest of the world was sexist, animation was worse. The financial underpinnings of the animation market have entropy to the point where it is very difficult to make a living. You know, you had to go through years of training to be able to draw this stuff and to be able to, to do it, and so you became a very valuable person. Well, it's changed now. It's computers. If you had seen what my studio looked like 20 years ago, it was reams of papers, animation desks, camera stands, you know. Um, it, it was, you know, unbelievably complicated and thinking, now it's, a, now it's a laptop. If you're going into it to get rich, I suggest accounting. You should, you should only do it if the process of, an, of animating gives you so much joy that you don't mind the financial insecurities that you're going to have to deal with along the way. And that's perfectly fine, and we, that's called being an artist. Finally, after years of Disney having utterly branded animation as children's entertainment, finally, 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 it, it's, it's breaking out of being considered a genre, and it's starting to become, be, be considered a medium. At the same time that's happened, uh, the, the agreed form on what's a good drawing and what's a bad drawing has loosened up. An animated world can look very personal now and very different. It used to be everything in the 80s looked like it had, you know, pumped out of the Disney Xerox machine. But now um, things have really opened up. So artistically, things have opened up tremendously. And content-wise, things have opened up tremendously. And we're actually finding ourselves in a place where there's a lot of that kind of personal expression available and even valued. And the people who succeed in this industry are the people who just don't have an out. They're gonna do it no matter what.